This video is an introduction and a demonstration of the interactive application Sound Map of Late Night State College. The main goal of this project is to pair sound and spatial data in an interactive web map format. Currently, this is a relatively untouched area in the mapping world. Ultimately, our application gives insight into sound activity on a Saturday night in downtown State College. This is done via multiple data collection methods at 8 p.m., 11 p.m., and 2 a.m. Sound in our map is represented using iconic symbols with multiple sequential color schemes. Our application has a relatively broad audience. Mostly is focused towards the general public and any state college or university park residents. These are the people who might just be exploring this map for their own entertainment or perhaps for the residents to find out where all the late night happenings are or where they are not. Given our audience, they need to be able to identify locations of sounds in their respective categories, understand characteristics of the sound, and be able to explore the map to understand the overall characteristics of late night stay college. Our project goals are to create an effective display that conveys information about sound, sound location, and that facilitates comparisons. We want to allow users to filter, explore, and visualize sound, namely through the use of a parallel coordinate plot, a map, a sound wave, and a legend. These are all simple and effective tools. We also want to demonstrate how sound can be implemented into maps to enhance an experience and understanding of late night state college. To make our application more effective, we conducted research on the current literature. McEachran, for example, describes how map symbols should distinguish themselves without the need for a legend. This is important for allowing users to simply and easily understand a map. This can be achieved through high iconicity symbols that are distinguished based on their color hue, lightness, size, and shape. We also looked to Kraft, Block, and Cairns for their discussion of user interactivity and exploration via zooming, dynamic filters, and linking. It's important for users to be able to interact with and explore a map to gain the most insight and understanding about late night downtown State College. Conair describes crowdsourced data for comprehensive data sets with local data or a large area. This is important because when traditional means of data collection are not practical, crowdsourced data is important for supplementing it. In our map application, we had a need for consistent data with specific locations at specific times, so we not only needed to use crowdsourced data, but specific data created by our group members. We also looked to works by Browen, who describes how users need to have more than just a click and listen for sound maps. It's important to have features like benchmarks, sound waves, and a parallel coordinate plot to facilitate greater understanding. We also looked to works by Newhoff, who describes how pitch and volume can influence each other when a human hears a sound. This is important because then we need to have a visual component for our map to allow users to gain the most understanding and insight about the specific sound waves. Our data collection was broken into two categories. The first was crowdsource data. We had friends send us their location in a minute-long sound recording at 8 p.m., 11 p.m., and or 2 a.m. Our second method was team-collected data. Our team collected a set of 11 recordings at predetermined locations at 8 p.m., 11 p.m., and 2 a.m. The main tool used were cell phones. This is because most people have a cell phone, and it's easier to get larger amounts of data that way. It's also very easy to transfer the data from our crowdsourced members to the team. Our sound data is analyzed in terms of the minimum decibel, root mean square decibel value, and the maximum decibel value. These attributes were extracted using Audacity. Our application itself includes some main features. These are the main map, the parallel coordinate plot, the legend, and an audio recording. Now we'll move into a demonstration of our final application. Here, first off, you have to see our main map, the parallel coordinate plot, the legend, our filters, and then where our sound will be displayed. To better understand our application, it's helpful to think of oneself as a writer and contributor to the online blog Onward State. You are a writer who is interested in recording things overheard in downtown late night stay college. You might start off, for example, by looking at 8 p.m. From here, you might be interested in this sound right here, which as you can see is Taco Bell. You can then click on the Taco Bell 8 p.m. and hear a sound recording. Clearly not much is happening at Taco Bell at 8 p.m. From here, you might look at 11 p.m. instead. You could, for instance, look at bars and interior bars. 
Now, by zooming in on the application, you can then click on a point, in which case this is the first interior. And you can scroll down to 11 p.m. and hear what's happening. <laughs> You might also be interested in the sound right nearby at Local Whiskey. To finish your exploration, you can click the reset button and then look at 2 a.m. You might be interested in looking at restaurants. You may find one that's called College Pizza and you want to hear it playing at 2 a.m. You can hear the following. No, go that way. No, call She's better. I'm going to see. I'm going to go to college pizza. You're so nasty. Okay. This girl goes, yeah, so like. And if you're also interested in finding out where the loudest sound is, you can use the parallel coordinate plot by clicking and dragging on the time side or 2 a.m. From here you can find out that the loudest location was Canyon Pizza. Looking forward, we hope that this project provides a basis for other geographers to experiment with sound mapping and that any potential user of the general public found it interesting, entertaining, and useful. Future recommendations for this kind of work include having a wide range of data collection over longer periods of time, crowdsourcing a larger magnitude, incorporating a parallel coordinate plot, working more with the symbols to implement creative attributes and variables, and to ultimately create a tutorial to allow users to more effectively utilize the application.